Hey, welcome back to module three, lesson two, writing down your one-year plan. This is gonna be fairly easy. Essentially, all that we're gonna be doing is breaking down your three-year family picture, or your three-year goals into a one-year outlook. And we're gonna take a lot of the key metrics that you brainstormed and wrote down for your three-year plan. We're just gonna focus on one or two of them. So what your one-year plan is really all about really focusing in, breaking down your three-year plan, down a little bit of what needs to happen this year. And this is gonna give you a really clear roadmap as to the really critical things that you need to get done this year, the opportunities you need to create or pay attention to this year so that you can move your family along. And what this is gonna do for you, you know, if you've been feeling overwhelmed, especially if you're in a blended family, you're still trying to figure out how this is all gonna work together, or if you're looking at divorce, you're in the middle of a divorce, you're looking at how to perhaps save your marriage, really come back together so you're not feeling like your roommates, this is gonna be your roadmap for the next year. It's gonna remove a lot of the overwhelm from your life. It's gonna help you be confident. You know what you're anchoring to. You're gonna be able to move forward. You're going to be able to stop repeating a lot of the same behavior as you start focusing on what really needs to happen this year, the changes that you're gonna make this year. And it's gonna be really exciting as you plan out your family transformation that will happen at the end of this year. Okay, so where do we start? Again, we start with the family fundamentals. You're gonna be looking at first of the date, what's the date one year from now? From there, again, we look at marital status. And this is again, really depending on the situation you are in when you're taking this course. A year from now, where do you wanna be in terms of your relationship with your significant other? Or with a, if you're in an abusive relationship, or if you're in a toxic relationship, where do you want to be? For me, when I wrote this down, I want to be happily married. And I you know I'm currently in a relationship, in a very strong relationship, and I want to make sure that continues. And then you will look at family size. Again, for us, I don't want any more children this year. Even though Melissa sometimes asks me, like, hey, what do you think about getting that reversal? I'm like, ha, ha, no, not, no, not this year. <laughs> Probably not ever. It's bad for her health. Anyways, family size. What do you want your family size to look like a year from now? And then after that, we're going to look at location. Again, we're probably gonna be staying here in Lehigh for the next year, probably for the next few years. So you just wanna write that down. Do you wanna move anywhere? And if so, that you may wanna start planning that into the next 90 days. Whenever you're considering a move, especially within a given year, that, that takes a lot of planning, a lot of preparation. And finally, income. For us, 240,000. So I have some very specific milestones for the family. I know what our family needs. And so we've dialed that in as to where we want to get our family income for this year. Next, you want to move on to culture. So we're going to looking at traditions. Are, they, are there any traditions you want to implement this year? For us, one of the things that I want to implement are the heart attacks. I'm just going to choose one tradition. The thing is with families, there's always something going on. There's always a lot of stress. In terms, by that, there's a lot of stressors in a family. When you're planning out what you're going to accomplish the next year, you want to be kind of realistic. I think, what's one thing I can get done this year? And so Russ, for traditions, I think we can implement the heart attacks. So that's what we're going to focus on this year and make sure that we plan in. And it gives me some leeway, but that's six months out. So it should be okay. Next time you're looking at the rituals. Of the rituals I listed for my three-year plan, which of these do I want to try implementing within this year? And I may break this down to like quarters because I know I'm going to operate in 90 day or three month increments. So I may think, okay, so what are four rituals that I can focus on one per quarter, one per three months that I can really focus on and get done right before I try adding in something else. And so for this, we ch I chose four rituals, those being in bedtime routines. And really what I'm gonna be is, I just want to be a little more present with, with the kids instead of considering it like a, a to-do or a task to check off my list. I just wanna take the opportunity to be a little more present with them, connect with them, ask them a question or two, I know what they were grateful for that day. And then also one of the things I was, I've been considering, because a lot of times bedtime is like the witching hour, is maybe just doing 10 deep breaths and a feel now. Okay, now I want you to focus on filling your fingertips or focus on filling your toes and help them regulate themselves before bed versus this hectic scramble sometimes occurs when we're trying to get everyone to bed on time. Another of the rituals is stories. I want to tell family stories on Sundays, kind of help 
look back to some of my past, my wife's past, and really highlight stories that exemplify some of our family values. So that's something I wanna do for the third quarter. And for the fourth quarter, I really wanna focus on thoughts I want to really embody, help my family embody in turn when they think about certain situations. And so this could be an affirmation. And for this is I want the affirmation or the thought to be, I am strong enough to feel blank emotion. And this is part of our resiliency. One of the thoughts I want to always have be there looking in the back when the kids say, but this is you know, boring, this is hard, this is whatever it is. And I want them almost hear my voice in the back of the head, almost like immediate rejoinder saying, ah, but you are strong enough. I am strong enough to feel this. So that's what the fourth quarter goal. And so for you, you want to write down, I would highly recommend you just focus one, one tradition and then four rituals that you want to implement one per quarter for the next year. And then we want to look back to your fundamentals. And so I would recommend not setting more than three to four goals for a given year as it relates to your breaking down your 10 year vision or your 10 year target to your three year family picture, or three year outlook down to your one year plan. And so as you're looking at those targets, as you're looking at those fundamentals and setting goals, the milestones you need to hit, I recommend only setting three to four in a given year. So for our marital status, one of the things I want to do to make sure that we're supporting marital status is I want to set a goal of like getting two weekend getaways for the next year, and at least 12 out of house dates. That's once a month out of the house. My wife and I are really good at in-house dates but with nine kids, it's hard to get a sitter. And so I wanna make sure I'm putting enough effort in, make sure that we get one sitter every month so my wife and I get out of the house together, enjoy time together. And for income, I understand how many clients I need. So I have a goal for how many tier one, tier two group and individual clients I have. And then for location, we're living here in the high, but guess what? We just moved here three weeks ago and we have some unpacking left to do. My goal for the end of the year is we are fully unpacked, fully moved in, pictures are up, cardboard boxes are down, they've been given off or recycled. That's my goal for the year. And then finally, I want to introduce those four cultural elements. And then for a focal metric, something, the one thing I wanna make sure I, I'm keeping track of every week is actually weekly planning sessions. This is one of the metrics that I feel is really important for my family because with nine kids, planning is critical. If I don't plan it, if I don't sit down, prepare my calendar with my wife's calendar, go over it together, we oftentimes find that we have booked events without telling each other and we've forgotten. And so we often need each other's support in these events and can create a lot of conflict if we're not consistently planning out our weeks together and touching base and developing micro visions each day as to what's important to them, what's important to me, in terms of what do we need to get done, or maybe my wife's, hey, I feel like I've been really cooped up. I want to get out into nature. Okay, let's get you out on a hike today or you know, a local walk. So from your one-year plan, we're going to move to your 90-day priorities. Now, this is something that Stephen R. Covey memorialized as rocks. So a priority is a rock, is the glass jar, if you put your priorities in first, then, you know, then all everything else can fit into place. But if you don't put in your rocks first, then all those little things fill up the jar and you can't fit in your priorities. So we always try to look at 90 days out, you know, three months, what do we need to get done within the next three months? And you have a, you want to look at your planning sheet, your worksheet for here. And again, you'll see that what's different about your 90 day rocks you just carry over all the information from your one-year plan and then you focus on four okay four to five i would not get above five rocks your day-to-day -day life you have a lot of things going on and you have a lot of things calling for your attention and so if you just limit the number of your big heavy rocks that you need to get done for the next 90 days it makes it a lot more doable you will plan out specifically when you want to get these things done and the big thing with rocks is you always sign someone to be accountable for them now, that doesn't mean that they have to do everything, but they're the ones that are really pushing and holding themselves accountable to get something done. For example, for my 90-day rocks, I have listed enrolling 
uh, a number of clients. So I'm shooting for 12 tier one clients. These are my premier coaching program clients where I wanna really help 12 families really come together and really make this great transformation. And those, the tier one programs take a lot of my time, a lot of my attention, because I'm working individually with each family member from everyone that's participating in the program. So that takes a lot of time. So I can't have too many tier one program clients, but it's really fulfilling for me to be able to work closely with these individuals. It's very fulfilling to see these transformations and see the growth that's happening. It's one of my big values. And so being able to see other people experience it is really rewarding for me. So that's something that I have to do. I, it's, I'm responsible for that. Melissa, one of her rocks, is the one weekend getaway. And so she's gonna be the one that's making sure that's get done. She may assign some, something to me. So she's like, hey, Joseph, find a spot on your calendar where we can get away for the weekend. And so that's my role and I will report back to her, but she's gonna make sure that we get across the finish line on this even though she may delegate certain tasks to me. And then because I'm normally the one doing bedtime routine, I'm gonna be focusing on revamping the bedtime routines so that we're doing that deep, deep rest and the fill nails so that our bedtime routine process that the kids have a little activity every night that helps them unwind, regulate their bodies so they're all fired up and from the disappointment of having to stop playing or stop doing whatever they were doing and go lay down in bed. We have this kind of transition activity that we can do with them to help them. So the bedtime routine process does not have so much friction. And then finally from Melissa, she's going to be accountable for the garage and for getting the picture set up. Not that she's gonna be doing all of it, but that she's gonna be making sure that the calendar is cleared and scheduled so that I'm gonna go out there and start lifting all of the, the heavy things on the storage shelves or you know, whatever it is I need to do or to help put up pictures on the walls. She knows where it's all going and she assigns all the tasks as to what needs to happen. And she's accountable for that. So that's a big thing with rocks. You need to have a few of them. They have to be the most critical things that helps you move forward on your one-year plan. And there's always someone accountable to get it done. And what you want to do is each week in your planning sessions, which we'll talk about later, you want to review the rocks and see, is, are we on track to getting this done before when we want to get it done by? Are there any obstacles coming up? Are there any challenges to getting this done that we didn't foresee? You want to talk through that so that your rocks, your priorities are always front of line each week. And talking about obstacles, this is where we want to address the change list. The thing is with rocks priorities, with a lot of these things that you're doing, it requires change, it requires a change to what you've been doing, it may require a change to how you're feeling about activities, it may require a change to how you're thinking about it. So any goals that you're trying to achieve will require change and you want to list out what that change looks at. And for me, when I look at my change list, I also want to ask myself a series of four questions. In order to achieve this priority, what is it I have to change what I'm doing? Because I know I'm changing what I'm doing. Is there something I have to change with how I feel about the activity? Because if I consistently don't feel like doing it, it's not going to get done. And if I need to change how I'm feeling about it, I need to change the way I'm thinking about it. And so this allows me to identify areas that I need to change all the way from my behavior to how I'm feeling to how I'm thinking. And often you'll have to address all three areas in your change list as you look at what you want to change. And again, you can do this individually or you can do it together as a family. You can think about as a family, how do we feel about this activity? Or as a family, how are we going about this? As a family, how are we thinking about this? You want to think about what needs to change in order to achieve these objectives, in order to achieve these changes. So just an example for me, one of the things I know I need to change in terms of the coaching is I need to get online. We need to update our online marketing. We're doing a lot of great referrals, word of mouth, going to networking events. Now it's time to really push for online marketing. So that's one of the changes I need to do. In terms of getting out on the weekends, one of the changes we need to do now that we're up here with family, and we don't have to necessarily pay several babysitters all at once to come watch the kids. We can get grandparents since they live close by and we can get siblings. So we need to get a hold of their schedules since that's a change to what we normally do, neighborhood sitter. Also, one of the things that we listed for the year is we want to go on these family hikes. We identified one of our weekend getaways that we want. <laughs> we identified one of the weekend getaways that we want to do is 
hike Mount Tim. So we know we're gonna have to do some training for that, which means we need to think about how we use our Saturdays differently. Because a lot of times our Saturdays, we get chores done. My wife's actually doing pretty good about this. She's going on hikes in the morning. So one of the things I need to change is how I approach my thoughts about working out. I wanna be ready and keep up with my wife. I should probably be doing a Stairmaster at the gym. And for bedtime routines, one of the things I will probably wanna look at is doing a group deep breath session or maybe doing deep breath sessions with each kid individually. Either way, I'll need to either add it on to the before or after the prayer. And so I need to think about as I go down to do it, if I need it, if I'm going to change how I'm going approaching bedtime routines, first off, I identify the action. We're gonna do the 10 deep breaths and the fill nows. So then I need to transition my thoughts and kind of feelings about it from something that I'm just in a hurry to get done to something I'm more present with. And that as I go downstairs, I'm thinking, okay, this is my opportunity to connect and to help them regulate before bedtime routine versus going down, like, okay, let's hear if we can get this done so I can go play wingspan with Melissa. So you wanna break it down, your change list. Think about, again, what activities or what behavior needs to be changed in order to accomplish the objective. Because we're dealing with behavior, we then have to look at what motivates behavior, emotion. If you're consistently not motivated to do something or consistently are motivated to do something, it's because of how you are thinking. We dive deep into this in the next modules four and five. And that's really where we kind of leave off here is that we've identified a lot of things that we need to do. It's a lot of, it's very behavior, very activity focused. Even though we have dived into values, now we need to really dive into in the next module, how do we take the values and really change the way we think about ourselves? Think about the past, think about our mistakes, think about others through the lens of our values. And I'm gonna give you some tools that you can use to manage how you think so that your thoughts serve you. So often, so much of what we do is subconscious. We have these stories that we tell ourselves, or we have these frameworks, these ideas about the world that do not serve us. We have ideas about money. We have ideas about our body. We have ideas about food that ultimately do not serve us. And so we self-sabotage. And we also look at how do we manage our emotions? Emotions are really like this fuel for our bodies that we can use to motivate action. And if we're using the wrong fuel or don't know how to process our emotions properly, it can be very explosive. Or we find ourselves not motivated to make any change or we find ourselves consistently doing the same thing that we're trying to change. So we're gonna dive into looking at how do we manage our emotions? How do we process them versus suppressing or distracting ourselves from them or reacting explosively to them? I'm really excited to help you see modules four and five. Really invite you to consider purchasing the full program. You're gonna learn how to change your thoughts, harness your emotions. We're going to dive into making better decisions. So much conflict comes from family decisions, such as how do we use money? How do we use our time? How do we raise our children? All those are really important decisions to make. And we're gonna dive into how we can go about making those decisions better. Even if your spouse isn't on board, even if your spouse isn't doing the program, this can be so beneficial for you as you're able to think through these problems ahead of time and start changing the way that you approach them. We also look at family processes. So often we have family habits where we just do the thing or we just go about our family activities without a lot of thought or we just do it the way that we've always done it and it consistently causes a lot of friction a lot of finding or contention. So we can look at those processes. We're gonna show you how to look at those processes and improve them so that you can automate growth, automate being able to enjoy your family so that your processes bring you habitually to where you wanna be. And finally, the family scorecard. We're gonna look at how you create a family scorecard for your family so that when things aren't going the way that you want them, you have a data-driven method to look at for clues to what needs to change or what's going on. Anyways, really looking forward to our next group coaching call. Again, if you haven't joined the Family Transformation Program, consider doing that. You can get a free session, see how you like it, see how it can benefit you. It's really transformative. And again, you can either do this as an individual, you can sign up for just you and your wife, or you can sign up your whole family for this. And again, I invite you to check it out and looking forward to seeing all of you in our next tier one group coaching program for the Family Transformation Program or some of our other programs that fit your needs. Looking forward to seeing you.